Hello, this is Paul Merton and welcome to Galton and Simpson's Half Hour. Celebrating 60 years of the amazing writing partnership of Ray Galton and Alan Simpson. They first met in 1948 in Milford Sanatorium where they were being treated for TB, tuberculosis. Thanks to the efforts of a fellow patient, Tony Wallace, who owned lots of radio equipment, a sanatorium radio network was established. This gave Ray and Alan an opportunity to begin to learn to write together. Although gifted writers, both Ray and Alan agree that every so often a situation in real life unfolds in front of you, and as it does, you realise you've got a one-off sitcom on your hands. Ray Gorton was hosting an evening around his house with a good friend of his and Alan's called Johnny Spooner. I've never met Mr Spooner, but I hear he's a great chap, a bookseller, but apparently he has a very argumentative nature. I'm told if you put this to him, he would argue that he was not argumentative. This particular night at Ray's, they were watching television and Johnny pointed at the screen and was convinced that he had just seen Burt Reynolds in the background. From that moment on, the rest of the evening escalated into a farce which Ray and Alan astutely and cleverly and rather lazily completely ripped off and put into a script of their own. Ray and Alan's early training was writing for comedians. They quickly got used to comics complaining about not enough jokes or that somebody else was given a funny line instead of them. But when Ray and Alan started writing for actors, they noticed immediately that actors did not complain about the script. They just set about learning the lines. And it was also easier to attribute characteristics to an actor playing a part. For example, in Steptoe and Son, the son is a staunch Labour supporter, and the old man is true blue Tory. In the 1960s, comedians would have been very reluctant to make their political persuasions public. The risk was you might lose half your audience. Far better to remain neutral and not risk your popularity. The other great advantage in using actors was they were not afraid of playing the drama in a scene. In the very first episode of Steptoe and Son, the son tries to leave the scrap metal business he shares with his dad. There's a horse and cart. The dad won't let the son take the horse, but he's welcome to the cart. The son tries to pull the cart on his own. He can't move. He's stuck. We see tears of frustration in his eyes. It was a very moving moment, beautifully acted by Harry H. Corbett, but one that would frighten most comics. A comic doesn't want an audience to catch him crying. For Ray and Alan, this was a great liberation. They were freed from the tyranny of the punchline. They could extend their range and write about any situation in any way they liked without having to worry about tailoring material to suit an individual comic style. And importantly, dramatic moments were embraced as an integral part of their storytelling. So here to help us celebrate 60 years of Ray and Alan's amazing writing partnership is the third of their adaptations. Originally written in 1977, here is I Tell You It's Burt Reynolds, starring Rick Mell and June Whitfield. Your hearing aids whistling. Mum, Granny's hearing aids whistling. Mother, mother, your hearing aid is whistling. Pardon? Your hearing aid is whistling. I can't hear you. My hearing aid is whistling. What did you say? It doesn't matter. It's all right now. Oh, I think it needs a new battery. I put one in for you yesterday. Pardon? I put one in for you yesterday. I thought you put one in for me yesterday. She left it on all night. I took her a cup of tea in this morning. It was lying on the table next to her teeth, whistling. Well, I've been her teeth whistling. <laughs> Don't be rude. Just watch the television, both of you. Here we are. Coffee's ready and hot chocolate for the children. Oh. Oh, Eric, how kind. You shouldn't have. Nonsense. I like to feel like one of the family and not just the lodger. A mere token of my esteem for the boundless kindness you have heaped upon my unworthy self while resting between engagements. You'd never guess he was an actor, would you? So what are we watching? The television. 
Who's that? With his arm round Gordon Brown. It's David Attenborough cuddling a chimpanzee. Put your glasses on. Pardon? Put your glasses on. I can't find them without my glasses. Can't see it. Can't hear it. There's not much point in sitting here. Sure to go to bed. It's about time you went to bed too. Oh, she heard that. Have you done your homework? Yes, no. Big mouth. We want to watch the programme. We'll do it afterwards, promise. Oh, no, no. It's not him. I'll go. Hello, hello, hello! Oh, it is him. Oh, well, that's it. We'll go and watch it upstairs on the little one. He never stops talking. Evening all! Hello, Uncle Jim. Goodbye, Uncle Jim. See you sometime. Evening, Mrs Davis. Evening, Mrs Davis. Oh, it's him. Good evening, James. Oh, it's Roger the Lodger. Evening, Sir Lawrence. Good evening. Got a job yet? Or are you still resting? As they say in your profession, waiting for Albert Finney to break a leg. <laughs> he went up for a part in Holby City last week. What as? A disease? <laughs> ha 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 ha. Hey, is your old man in? No, he's working late. Didn't expect to see you round here tonight. Well, I was on my way to the pub. Hmm, that makes a change. So I thought I'd come around and drag you all out for a drink. Oh, no, no, not tonight. No, we're going to watch the television. Oh, all right then. I'll sit and watch it with you. Oh, no, no, don't let us spoil your evening. You go and have a drink. No, no, I'd just as soon watch the telly. Oh, God. He's not going to watch it with us, is he? Now, don't talk all the way through it. I'd like to follow it for once. Charming. I won't mm. say a word. <clears throat> What's on, then? The Great Escape. There's football on the other channel. We are watching The Great Escape. Oh, all right, then. I don't mind. I like Henry Fonda. <laughs> Steve McQueen. Whoever. Oh, your colour's all wrong. Leave it alone. It's too much red. Why don't you go round the pub? They'll be sending out search parties if you don't turn up. You can't watch it like that. Look at him. He looks like he's been boiled. Don't touch it. Won't take a second. That's the wrong knob. As the bishop said to the actress, eh? <laughs> eh? Well, the another frame hold slipping. Why doesn't he go round the pub? You haven't got a proper aerial. That's the trouble. <laughs> Come on. Come on. That's the line hold gone. Have you got a screwdriver? Leave it alone. You need a new set. Even I've got a better one than that. Then why don't you go home and watch oh, it? Oh, no, that's it. Don't touch it. Sit down and be quiet. Yes, but... We like it like that. Leave it alone. Why does he keep coming round here? Oh, beginning to look his age, that Henry Fonda, isn't he? Steve McQueen. Whoever. You could die of thirst in this house. Help yourself. He usually does. Not having one yourself? Uh, no, thank you. I'm trying to watch the television. What about Glenda Jackson? So am I. Stop talking. <sighs> the nearest you ever get to it, I suppose, watching it. If you ever want a job down the garage, washing the buses, I could be... Be quiet! Hello, it's Burt Reynolds. I didn't know he was in it. Who? Burt Reynolds. Where? Him. Just getting off the back of the lorry. That's not Burt Reynolds. Not him, the bloke behind him. Bert Reynolds. That's not Bert Reynolds. Of course it is. That is Bert Reynolds. It's nothing like Bert Reynolds. Oh, come on. Don't tell me I don't know Bert Reynolds. Eric, tell her. Isn't that Bert Reynolds? It's nothing like him. It is? I'll tell you, it's Bert Reynolds. It's not. It is. He hasn't got hair like that for a start. What's that got to do with it? He's changed it. It was made a few years ago, this was. 1963. Oh, of course, I keep forgetting. You're in the business. You know all about it, don't you? Daryl F. Zanuck has <sighs> spoken. I know Burt Reynolds when I see him. Oh, of course, and I don't. I say it's not Burt Reynolds and so does Eric. That doesn't make you right, does it? That is Burt Reynolds. Why doesn't he go round the pub? Granny, you saw him. Eh? You saw him. Who? Burt Reynolds. Who? Bert Reynolds! Where? There! <laughs> That's not Debbie Reynolds. Bert Reynolds! Who is? He is! Him! It isn't! All right, put your money where your mouth is. 
Go on. I'll bet you your week's doll money that is Burt Reynolds. Go on. 30 quid. Cover that. I'm not betting with you. No, because you know I'm right. That is Burt Reynolds. Oh, he's gone. Well, well, look, sit down and be quiet. Forget about it. It doesn't matter. It does to me. Don't tell me I don't know Burt Reynolds. That was Burt Reynolds. Yes, well, shut up. I've had a quiet evening. I've lost the thread as it is. Well, I'm sorry, but he's bet me that it wasn't Burt Reynolds. He didn't bet you. You bet him. He accepted it. I did not. <laughs> You're not so sure now, are you? <laughs> ah, yeah, they're backing down now. It didn't look like Debbie Reynolds to me. Oh, I think I'll go and watch it with the kids. No, no, that's all right. No, I won't say any more. I've made my point. What point? That I was right. That was Bert Reynolds. You were not right. That was not Bert Reynolds. <sighs> look. Joyce, how long have I been going to the pictures? Hmm? I have seen every film that Burt Reynolds ever made. Well, you're not seeing one now, because he's not in it. Oh, you'd be quiet as well. Don't encourage him. You know what he's like. Oh, he was like. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Oh, God, it's him. Hello, love. Hello, Mum. He's there again. Yeah, I know. Hello, Jim. Jack! Just the man we've been waiting for! Oh, don't start. Let him get in. No, no, no. Settle the dispute. Not another one. It won't take a minute. Sit down. What's all this about? Well, well he... Ah, 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 ah. No clues. Say nothing. Don't put words in his mouth. Now, Jack, I want you to watch this film. The Great Escape. Right. Now, there is someone in the film, and I want you to tell them who it is. Steve McQueen? No, oh, no, not him. The person in question is not on the screen at the moment. But when he comes on, I will say, who's that? And you will tell them. Right? All right. Get your money ready, actor. There he is. Who's that? Charles Bronson. No, not him. Him, the one behind him. I don't know. Well, of course you do. I mean, look at him. He's famous. Well, not to me, he's not. I've never seen him before. You have. Dozens of times. Uh, we went through all this with From Here to Eternity. Every time someone came on, there's a face, there's a face, who's that? You ruined that film. He's not just a face, he's a star. Well, what's he doing standing behind Richard Attenborough? Because he wasn't a star then. This was years ago. 1963. Don't you start. It's on the credits. Copyright MCMLX111. That's 1963. Typical. Typical. A spear carrier in Caesar and Cleopatra, and he's an expert in Roman numerals. All right, then. I give up. Who is it? Well, it's Burt Reynolds. Who? Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds? <laughs> That's nothing like him. Am I the only one who's got two eyes? That is Burt Reynolds. Three against one. Shut up. Even his hair's not like Burt Reynolds. I told him that. He's changed it, hasn't he? I bet you fifty pounds it's Burt Reynolds. Why doesn't he go down the pub? Doesn't mention Burt Reynolds in the paper. I think they'd mention it if he was in it. Because they don't know he's in it. They're as daft as you lot. They don't realise it was made so long ago. MCM LX one 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 nineteen sixty three. If you say that again, you won't get to the first lot of adverts. It is Burt Reynolds. I'll prove it's Burt Reynolds. Where's the Radio Times? Mother's sitting on it. Granny. Granny. Oh, you off down the pub? Good night. The Radio Times. You're sitting on the Radio Times. Eh? The Radio Times. I'm sitting on it. I know you are. Would you mind getting up? Oh, you're not having my seat. I don't want your seat. I want the Radio Times. Stand up. Oh, why doesn't he bring his bed round and have him done with it? Now, this'll settle it once and for all. <coughs> the Great Escape. <coughs> Steve McQueen, Charles Bronson, James Coburn, Richard Attenborough. <coughs> God, bloody silly magazine. No Burt Reynolds. Of course not. They don't put down all the cast, do they? They don't put down the bit players. You ought to know that. Your name's never been in there. It would have been if I was Burt Reynolds. You? They wouldn't put your name on a roll of toilet paper. 
I tell you, it's Burt Reynolds. What is that, Gordon Brown? No, it's the chimp again. That's the end of part one. I haven't followed a word of it so far. Oh, is that Mr Cameron? No, Mum, it's still the chimps. Uh, how's the dinner? I'll go and see how it's getting on. I'll come with you. Oh, I'll go and make the salad. But don't leave me here with him. It's Bert Reynolds. I tell you, it's Bert Reynolds. Arthur, got the telly on? Never mind about the football. Switch it over. The Great Escape. Hurry up, hurry up. He'll be gone. Done it? Right. Take a good look. There's a bloke on it talking to Henry Fonda. Whoever. Now, who is it? Of course you do. Is that or is it not Burt Reynolds? It is Burt Reynolds. I tell you, it's Burt Reynolds. Oh, cobblers, get back to your football. 4-1. What does he know about it? He wouldn't recognise Adolf Hitler unless he had a number on his back. <sighs> Another blind pew. I'm surrounded by idiots. Did he pay for the phone call? You just missed Humphrey Bogart. He was the German orderly ladling the soup out. All right, all right. You'll eat dirt. I'm not giving up on this. Oh, why don't you admit you're wrong? That's four against you. Not counting the kids. They say it's not Burt Reynolds. They're too young. The film was made before they were born. 1963. I don't understand how you can't see it. I mean, look at him. There he is again. It's... Definitely Bert Reynolds. The eyes, the mouth. If you're so confident, take the bet. Ollie, we sit. Two hundred quid. Well, you still owe me a thousand from when we saw that clip on film night. Well, I say we. I saw it. I can't believe you saw it. You got everything wrong. Wrong? <laughs> wrong? Like what? What, for instance? Uh, no, no, it doesn't matter. No, come, come. <clears throat> like what? No, forget about it. It's too long ago. You'll only deny it anyway. Deny it? Deny it? <laughs> deny what? See, you've forgotten already. The music man. Right? That's right. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. I thought that would still be rankling. Oh, dear, oh dear. Forgotten it? That'll be the day. I've got a mind like a computer. Forgets nothing. It's all stored away up here, mate. A complete memory bank. Just press the right buttons and out it all comes. Zonk, 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 zonk. What do you want to know? How many trombones led the big parade? 77. See? It's wrong again. It was 76. No, no, no. You're getting mixed up with the American War of Independence. 1776. No, no, son. 76, the war. 77, trombones. I think you'll find that's right. It's not right. 77 trombones led the bit. It doesn't even scan. Some numbers are right. Some numbers are wrong. You've got to have the right number of syllables. You wouldn't say two-thirds of a league, two-thirds of a league, two-thirds of a league onwards into the valley of death road to 597. You'd bloody well have to if that's all there were. Not when it's a poem. You have poetic license. He didn't know exactly how many there were. He used 600 because that was approximately right and it sounded right. Alfred Lord Tennyson was a poet, not a historian. Lord Alfred Tennyson. Alfred Lord Tennyson. No, no, you can't say that. You can't be christened Lord. It wouldn't be allowed. No vicar would stand for it. You were made a Lord or you are born a Lord. He was still Alfred Lord Tennyson. Be quiet, for God's sake. Be quiet, both of you. God. Let's just sit down and enjoy what's left of the film. Phone calls are expensive <sighs> these days. He ought to pay for it. I'm not really interested in your money. I just want you to admit that I'm right. And that's the fourth beer he's had. I went out and bought these during the interval. Do you want one? Pardon? Do you want one? No, thank you. Not if you bought them. If you wouldn't keep arguing with me, we wouldn't have all this trouble. Well, there we are. The end. If someone would like to tell me what it was all about... Hang on! Hang on! The credits! <laughs> now we'll see who's right. Watch carefully. When his name comes up, I want you all to apologise. He wasn't on there, Jim. Well, of course he wasn't on there. I didn't expect him to be. 
Uh, I'll go and get dinner. Why didn't you expect him to be? Because if he'd been on there, he would have been in the Radio Times, wouldn't he? Yes. Which proves my point. He's a star now. If they'd put his name on the credits, they would have had to put him above Henry Fonda. Steve McQueen. Oh, I've just about had enough of you, Sonny Jim. I'll take my 30 quids worth of you outside, if you like. Now, come on, come on, this is getting silly. I didn't come home here to listen to all this rubbish. Let's forget it all, no more. So, they thought the best way out of it was to leave him off the credits altogether. Say nothing, keep Sturm, Nante Polari, and hope no one recognises him. But they weren't counting on me. <laughs> I recognised him the minute he walked on. That's because I watch television. I actually do watch it, unlike some people I know who just let the world wash over them without even getting wet. I watch it. I don't make pronouncements lightly. I don't talk for the sake of talking, you know. Is he still talking? No wonder his wife left him. So when I make a pronouncement, it is worth taking heed of. And that was Bert Reynolds. You're getting worse. Now let's forget it. I've had enough. No, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not letting you get out of it as easy as that. You have challenged me. This is a confrontation. I'm not bothered. If you want to slow walk down Main Street, that's all right with me. I don't know what you're talking about. Because I'll destroy you. Right now. I don't like being made to look a burp. Well, don't act like one. Oh, he's using the telephone again. Who's he ringing now? I don't know. Directory, the telephone number of the Independent Television Authority, please. Oh, no. He's crackers. Thank you very much. If you wouldn't mind connecting me. Hello, ITV. Nah, now we'll see. I wonder if you could give me some information, please. I have been watching one of your programmes tonight, and I noticed Bert Reynolds was in it. Would you please confirm this? The Great Escape. Bert Reynolds. No, no, B-U-R-T. Thank you. Straight from the horse's mouth. Hello? I know it's not in the Radio Times. I've already looked. His name wasn't on the credit titles. He had it taken off. Because I recognised him. Yes, I am sure it was Bert Reynolds. Look, I know Bert Reynolds when I see him. I tell you, it was Bert Reynolds. So you can't help me. Well, thank you very much. What did they say? She said it could quite easily have been Bert Reynolds. But she didn't actually say it was. She didn't see it. She was probably too busy, with people ringing up, asking her to confirm that it was Bert Reynolds. He's phoning again. Come and sit down and have your dinner. No, no, I am going to settle this once and for all. I'll enjoy my dinner better when I have won. <sighs> Hello? D Hello? Daily Telegraph, may I speak to your television critic, please? Well, where is he? At home, watching te Oh, at home, watching television. Good. Can you give me his home number? No. Well, can I speak to your information service? Thank you. They're marvellous up there. They've answered everything I've ever asked them. Hello? Yes, I've had a little bet with some of my friends. I saw Bert Reynolds in The Great Escape tonight, and they didn't. Will you please tell them I was right? I've looked in the Radio Times. It wasn't there. No, he wasn't on the credit titles. I tell you, it was Bert Reynolds. Look, I know Bert Reynolds when I see him. No, nothing else. Except that, as from tomorrow, I shall be buying the Daily Express. Bloody fools. They only watch BBC Two up there. Why don't you give up? Give up? Give up? Well, it's not important, is it? It's important to me. Well, who cares whether it was Burt Reynolds or not? I care. I've got a bet on it. We haven't got a bet on it. I've got a bet on with Dame Edith Evans over there. You haven't. He didn't take it. Then what's all that down there? Green shield stamps? That's your money. Pick it up. No. That's what he's bet me. And that's what I want from him. He can't afford it. He's out of work. Now be quiet. It's gone beyond a joke now, and I'm getting fed up with it. No, I can see there's only one way to settle this. Oh, he's using the telephone again. International Directory, 
the United States of America, Hollywood, Los Angeles. I would like the telephone number of Mr. Bert Reynolds. Oh no, I don't believe it. Yes, Bert Reynolds. He's a film star. Address? I don't know his address. Just a minute. Oi, superstar. What's Bert Reynolds' address? Well, how should I know? You're an actor. What's that got to do with it? Bert Reynolds doesn't know my address. Nobody knows your address. That's why you don't get any work. I- I'm sorry. We haven't got his address. Well, would you please phone the number and ask him if he will accept a call from Mr. James Knife of England, who would like to speak to him on a matter of great urgency. Knife. James Knife. As in the back. Tell him I am the president of the Great Britain branch of the Bert Reynolds Fan Club. My number is England seven nine four six triple o seven. Thank you. We'll soon get to the truth now. You don't think he's going to phone you back, do you? Why not? Fan clubs are very important to these people. He's human. He's a businessman. He knows which side his bread's buttered on. You've got to keep in with your public. It's people like us who keep water in his pool. <laughs> oh yes, he'll speak to me, and then greet a garbo. It'll be up yours, won't it? Debbie Reynolds hasn't phoned back, has she? <whistles> See, as soon as he heard it was me. <whistles> Now then, <coughs> the moment of truth. Hello. Yes, this is him. He, that me. Oh, good. Perhaps you'd be so kind as to put him on. Hello, Mr. Reynolds. Oh, he's joking. He's having us on. Mr. Reynolds, I am the president of your fan club in Great Britain. Pardon? Oh, I'm sorry, I woke you up. Midday? What used to be up anyway? This won't take a minute. Eh? No,、oh, all right. We'll pay for it this end if you're down to your last million. Yes, I'm still here. Look. Bert, we have been watching a film you made some years ago, The Great Escape. I would just like you to, The Great Escape. Yes, you were. It was set in a prison camp. Pardon? No, it was you. It was definitely you. No, no, your name wasn't on it. But it was made a long, long time ago. You've probably forgotten it. I mean, we all forget things. There's no crime in getting old. You should write things down, Bert. It was you. Look, Bert, baby, I know you when I see you. I tell you, it was you. I'll tell you the plot.、Uh, look, you were playing this fellow. Who, will you listen? You were marvelous in it. It was you. You don't remember all the films you were in. Don't you take that attitude with me. I bet it was you. Fifty dollars. All right then, if you want to bet your wallet, five hundred dollars. I am not some kind of nut. All right, come on then. Let's start from the beginning. Let's go through all your films. I'm sorry, Bert, you're wrong. Whether you like it or not, mate, you were in it. I tell you that it was Bert Reynolds. I was sitting there watching the TV. I tell you, it's Bert Reynolds, star Rick Mail and June Whitfield. With Ewan Bailey, Angus Galton, Georgia Galton Ailing, Richard Hugh, and Liza Sadaby, it was written by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson, and the producer was Carol Smith. That was a Red Door Tesla Bars production for BBC Radio Two.